everyone, this is the Mad Salvi letting you know that unless things are proven with Twitter posts and stuff like that and actual, have actual proof behind it, treat everything in this thing as a theory. I will mark try to mark certain things as news and theory and everything like that to kind of let you guys understand, but also, you know, use a critical mind. And I hope you do enjoy. Mark your calendars. Any colors upcoming general meeting and shareholders will be placed on July 30th. I'm not going to do that voice again. I'm sorry. Uh, same how the couple of days ago, maybe close to a week ago, we had Hololive doing their their monthly shareholders meeting, their general shareholders meeting for the year. Their shareholders meeting is going to be done for any color on July 30th. Uh, it's going to be please explain the loss of current concert cancellation. Please explain the EN performance. Please explain revised plan for overseas expansion. Please explain leave some big old shareholders. All these questions are probably going to be the things asked by them. Questions will raise doubts for long term investors. If they're left, any color will lose support. Maybe they're doing short term investing now. Uh, then they'll make short-term investors disappoint. The stock will be will hit ground. I mean, it's already lowering quite a bit. Don't know if further information will be required, but you can send out pre-questions to them and see if they get answered. Is Riku one of those directors up for election? He's not. He's a CEO. He won't be up for re-election. Uh, guess we'll find out. Real future here. We can't hide unless he pulls the same trick of NC Soft CEO did, uh, claiming he's beating elsewhere. Election directors can audit or supervise anything. Is some show to elect investors on a toothless basis. Document sources, notice of the meeting. They're going to be doing their meeting. And let's see how this goes. It's not going to go well. Now, as much as I am someone who is like, look at what Nidhi Sandhi is happening. Look at the side effects of all the negative things that Nidhi Sandhi has done. There could be a very good reason for the merch booth line looking like this. Looking very empty. If I remember correctly, when I was a part of, when I used to go to Anime Expo, because I used to travel every year to Los Angeles and go to Anime Expo, uh, the merch lines were almost always not very packed, unless it was Good Smile Company, or, you know, like Nendoroids or other kind of big figures that were expected to come out that were like, oh, pre-sales and blah, blah, blah. That's when they were really packed. Uh, the other ones, like, for example, this one from Nidhi Sanji, is not very packed. But even then, considering... The whole situation it is looking extremely empty usually you have like maybe 10 people in line for a bigger one like maybe hollow live or you know doki bird as we know they're gonna have a lot of things being sold for merch and in this one it really does look like it is the consequences of their actions that are causing this whole situation and that is of course let's see what people say why is it so white and stark? They could have at least put some multiple replica displays in the top shelf. Not going to lie, wholeheartedly think that it's one of the first con uh, the cons, first aid and security booth. They have them in every hall, especially the fact that such drastic change wedge between their mural and I don't know where the art is from. Feel bad for animates. They should not have been taking this L on behalf of Nidhi Sanji, but it was their choice to still go through with it. Edit, by the way, this is a line for the Eva section of anime. Ah, okay. It loops all the way around to the other side. So this is the same company same company animate frontier works like i said this is what i expected this isn't like huge but it's still normally what i expected a bit more of instead of this emptiness that we have here and um it is definitely their merch line fans were afraid of height and doki imagine the where the awkwardness of niji yen and niji santi boost both sandwiched between v shoujo and hollow life be like oreo missing the cream honestly so yeah doesn't look great but um no i don't i don't feel too bad for the situation because they kind of brought it upon themselves unfortunately i wish they were a better company i wish they treated their talents better but unfortunately we're in the situation that we're in more stark contrast but this one is a special one because this is a karaoke with special guest usan and doki bird for you know the the whole kind of world tour type thing that usan is doing with his his karaoke's his singing his things like that this is one that he did with doki bird because they've been close they you know they want to connect with each other with only just a little bit of scuff. It's expected to have some scuff, honestly. You might see a glimpse of something negligible in the background, but don't worry about it. A glimpse of, of Nidhi Sanji, I guess, in the background. Yeah, that would have been better. It would have been better if it was this one. Have no context. Did they actually swap the Uman avatar? They did their base for that. <laughs> None is needed. Did they actually? They actually did. They actually... Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. VTuber agency and having less VTubers at Anime Expo than PC Parts Company. They're a merch company. They are a merch company at this point. Nidhi Sanji is a merch company at this point. And they're not even doing a good job at being a merch company. You know? But it's, it'd be hilarious if they actually did do this. Yeah, they did. They actually did do this. This is actually <laughs> them doing this. You gotta love Doki and the, the Usan to be able to do this and to have that. It's just... Uh, 
it is just the best. It is peak comedy. Showing the Hololive stuff just from the Hololive section. Before we had, you know, coverage of all the other ones. Vishojo, Doki Bird, Nidhi Sanji, which was empty. Uh, we have more photos from Hololive, Holostars, etc. Boosts. Uh, this is the look of everything. This is Hololive. Look at all these people. Very happy there. You have Hollows, you know, more Holostars and stuff. They're all there happy there too. This looks like it was later in the day, maybe. This is in Kentia Hall, their main hall. And there is the Doki Bird stuff. And there is Nidhi Sanji, of course, being empty. They have standees. They have other things like that. People, of course, they have staff. As you can see, there's staff around uh, making sure that people don't touch things, don't do things wrong. But we're focusing more on these two, which is when you have a group of people that you help feel like a community, you help feel like you care about them. Even if you, you're just putting on a face as a mega corporation, you help them feel like they matter. This is what happens. You get people that are dedicated to you and people that are there ready to be there for you, you know, to be there and support you and everything like that. So that is always good. People brought their pen lights because this was a concert. I believe it was Zedia or someone else. Zeta, 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 or, you know, there was someone doing a concert in the background. It looks like Zeta possibly. So they had that as a small event, and that's why you had people with pen lights. Uh, NDF claims it's our fault. They have three accounts to stock antis. Now, this is a claim that I need proof for. Uh, generally thought this was Kurosanji member at first because self-owned. Why would viewing content if it makes you depressed? You think it's someone else's fault you have three accounts to stock antis with? Unfortunately, I'm hooked into Nidisanji Twitter as an ex-fan, but you don't have to be. If my algorithm wasn't trash, I'd be delighted. Uh, generally had to check if they were Niji or what. Yeah, they are. This person here is, of course, they, they redacted the name so that people don't go and try to harass or stalk the person as well. Drama, I don't know if it generally feels depressing that Niji fans have at least three accounts made with the sole reason of keeping tabs on antis, and yet fans of other agencies still insist it is the minority in their fan base that causes issues. It is a minority. If you have a fan base of 100,000 people and 100 of them are causing issues or even 1,000 of them are causing issues, that's only 1%. That's 99% who aren't. It's, it's still a loud minority, and it should, still shouldn't happen, but it is technically considered a minority. We would, wouldn't have hundreds worth of tweets of those accounts if they would just own up. We aren't telling them to control them. We just want them to admit they effed up and give us the long dude apologies. There's no need for apologies when the liver themselves aren't the ones pushing for this. You know what I mean? If the liver itself isn't pushing for harassment, then they don't. the liver themselves do not have to apologize for harassment. The logic is so convoluted, I'm not even sure what they're saying. Uh, why would you even stalk, bro? Just block them and go on with your life. Just like hold up, that have a hobby. Could understand if their algorithm wasn't constantly showing them stuff like mine is, but like going out of your way to find people don't I like don't like keeping tabs of them. It's insane. Who the heck has three Twitter accounts? Even if they paid for it, it's too much really in truth. I have to myself back when they were small. I, like, I think I had like I had um, a personal one, which I removed. I only have one right now. I think I used to have two, but I only have one right now. Continuation of the situation with false ID. Now adding Philly into the list of a little bit of drama. The so false ID was a nothing burger. They claimed that false ID was committing charity fraud because the numbers didn't add up. But you have to remember there's always a delay with numbers. Numbers can be up to one day delayed. They did it on Tiltify, which doesn't allow personal banking accounts to be used to receive funds and it was a tiltify connected directly to gamers outreach and directly to summer jam which was the one where they're trying to get gaming stuff for people who are ill and in the hospital that will be directly going to that bank account so there's no way that false could have taken money uh with how much misinformation this one keeps pushing wouldn't this lady's sister get sued for libel they could they very well could this rate they keep going, False ID could and even may have a case considering they keep stalking them on Discord. They could have them removed from Twitter, at least this, this, these posts removed from Twitter, I think. False, by the way, is very much friends with Fillion and is signed to the same talent agency, which is Mythic Talent. Also part of turning a blind eye to the scam. It's not a scam. Uh, so don't expect transparent reporting from him on this. Mythic is the home for VTubers who care deeply about saying that Arsler take the joy in collaborating with alleged groomers and MAGA lawyers and scam creators repeatedly, I guess. False also has stolen art from Niji fans in the past, so very much dislike him and posted on his timeline without credit. So there's that too. Here's the thing with, with art. If you are monetizing art, that's where you have an issue. But if you are using it, like for example, if you're using it for things in your timeline, which is they posted it publicly, you they don't have any real recourse because you're not monetizing it. You're not selling their art as your own. You're not actually making any standees or anything like that. You're just reporting on it which is what false does, what I do, what Rima does, what uh, Kyo does, what those people do. They report on it. 
So that that still falls under fair use. Uh, why are you guys suddenly sharing NDF and ED sister posts? Why give them the publicly publicity and eyes? They're robot. They're nobodies. You're just doing the work for them. Agreed, but also they did redact everything here. So someone would actually have to go searching hard to try to find it. Just let them drown in their own narratives and seethe. Yeah, I mean, they're already drowning in those narratives. Let them just do it. They really have nothing between this and the bagels schizo posting. And Trivial is crazy. Yeah, they're just doing crazy stuff. It's just I bring it to light because, you know, darkness and evil thrives in uh, when, when they are not being put on the spotlight. They do thrive when the spotlight is not on them. And we'll just keep that spotlight on them as much as we can. On a positive note, Roboko-san was in the hospital. I didn't cover it because I wanted to get more news on this whole thing. Uh, they are discharged from the hospital. We'll talk about the experience later. What ended up happening was, like they mentioned here, let's go to the Hololive one that has a little bit more information. Uh, machine translation. Couldn't tell them because they have a date for when I would be discharged, but I was hospitalized for about a week after being taken in by an ambulance. Now that I'm feeling better, I want to talk about that time. This time, it's noon. Wake up. The most difficult question I get is in an ambulance is, do you know what day it is today? I also feel very hot. Several days ago, she had a fever of 104 degrees Fahrenheit. That is dangerous for the human brain. She is a robot in, in VTuber world, but in ambulance, she is a human brain, and that is very that's overheating. That is overheating for her. That is not good. 39 per 9C reminds me of old unpleasant days. Like, I've had a fever this high, and it makes you hallucinate. It makes you see things because your brain is quite literally cooking. So it makes you hallucinate. I remember I was up to like 104.4, 105. Yeah, we had to cool that down very fast. We did everything we could to cool it down. Hospitalized for a week. Went in for an oil change. Check engine light came on. <laughs> Running with the Roboco theme, yes. Isn't like the second or third time Roboco has been taken to the hospital via ambulance. I hope she's doing all right. Yeah, it seems to recall the most uh, time. She almost passed out in the bath earlier. Hope they're, rela they're not related and she finds a cause. Like, I hope that she finds a cause for what's happening. Just a little bit of update on what's happening with Roboco. This is something that I've always said. I've always been criticized. Always. And, I mean, you guys can criticize me however you want. And I'm fine with that. Is that I am, you know, a Hololive sympathizer. I'm a Hololive apologize, apologist, etc. No. The big difference between Hololive and Niti Sanji, in my mind, is what is saying here. They learn from their mistakes. There is the Mano Alo incident that happened. They learned from that. They protected their talents a lot more mentally, uh, their mental states. The Yozora Mel incident way back in the day, way back in the early days, where she got stalked by management, by an actual manager. She got stalked by one of one of the managers. That manager was replaced, was removed. Uh, her expenses were paid for, you know, legal expenses and other things like that by Hololife. They later changed things where no one manager has that type of control to make people stay and go and be in places that they want them to be, that type of thing. Also, making a bit of disconnect between female li female livers and their managers to protect them from that kind of stuff. Russia incident also got protected. The Hololive China incident. They removed the China branch and they made sure there were more protections in place to protect people like Kiryu Koko and Hachama from those type of big issues that they were happening. They have stronger protections on, um, on mods. They have more mods now. They do more protections uh, to make sure there's not this huge anti- place the antis don't have as much strength as they used to there are many problems in hololive just like there are many problems in nidi sanji the difference is basically like also the 20 days without response for game perms and management i know that's going to get fixed it may be a while but especially since i held them responsible for that too i marked them as that being a negative for them too i got criticized for that even it's just i have to call everything out i want to be objective in everything i do i want to call it out because when you call it out that gives them a chance to fix it the issue is Niji Sanji never seems to want to fix anything. Hololive goes and actually apologizes and tries to fix things. It's like, I won't defend the management, didn't respond for 20 days, but it is bad. <clears throat> we'll say the fact that they can complain on stream is a good standard because Niji Sanji doesn't seem to let them complain on stream. Hololive, they can go and vent. Kiara vented about the 3D as well. Kiara vented about not getting her 3D concert quickly enough. Uh, there were others who vented about not getting their 3Ds quick enough. Things like that, but they get to vent on their channel. And they do not get like sudden stealth suspension for doing that on their channel. That is a good move from Hololive. That is good things. Even though I have a lot of criticisms for Hololive, just like I do for Nidhi Sanji, it is good news that they do that. And here, because we have to put it there, there's a clip of Crony mentioning that she does trust her manager. But I'm glad. Basically, she's mentioning about people liking the voice pack and, uh, you know, the manager trusting the manager. I bet you guys like the voice pack. Oh. Look who we have here. Version 2. If I knew that I was going to be featured for the key visual. <laughs> it's okay. 
Maybe there's gonna be another oppor- Ah, who am I kidding? But it's still nice, you know? Because I really, really want to be a part of a key visual. That's always very yeah, nice to be part of a key so visual. I'm really happy that I got featured. Yay! <laughs> yeah. I, uh, yeah, I really want to be part of the key visual voice packs. And I was thinking, oh, it'd be really nice if I was featured. And uh, yeah, thanks, Chroma. Chroma was very nice to, you know, make it happen. Yeah. So, yeah. She talked to her manager, she wanted a key visual, and she actually helped make it happen. And that is good to have that type of manager, uh, you know, camaraderie, whatever you want to call it. Manager talent camaraderie, manager talent connection, uh, communication. That's very hey, good. Yippee. Love. <laughs> we got each other's back. It's, it's good. Like, we may be working on different sides, but we're, like, rooting for each other. That's like, good. If Chroma comes up in conversations, I'd be like, nah, Chroma is not the kind of person to do that. Chroma, she's so good. So she defends her manager because her, her manager's actually doing things to help her. And that's the way it should be. I wish it was like that in Nidisanji. Again, don't ever do this. This is not welcome in, in any community. Do not go and harass an artist just because they are a fan of Nidhi Sanji. Do not go harass fans of Nidhi Sanji. Do not go harass fans of anybody, whether fans of Doki, Nidhi Sanji, whoever. Uh, why do people do this? Harass an artist who specializes in wiggly mode designs while they no longer support Niji and only just want to clear out the remaining Niji merch? So somebody spent money in my Etsy store to leave a review. Okay, I guess. Doki Bird Wiggle, Moving Fidget Toy, Hard Enamel. Uh, creator supports the abusers and homos homophobes i guess what the heck what who who is it who's a phobe who the heck is a phobe uh last comment on the situation i have no ill will towards any of the talents and niji and i'm forever grateful to the wiggles i made for them gave so many opportunities uh i stopped supporting them after seeing how unprofessional the corp itself was and I decided to halt all future production niji related merch a while ago for those interested in grabbing anything the prices are permanently staying low until sold out so i can make the production money back but there will be no restock as for the review itself I'm working on getting it reported removed if possible, but if not, it's okay. And then I'll work extra hard to make sure any of my actual clients keep being 100% satisfied. This also, this is your reminder to leave nice review if you buy an Etsy and you're happy with your order. It helps more than you think. It's because people legitimately don't think, seriously, how dumb do you have to be to pull off a stunt like this while also not thinking about why the setter is, cheering out, is clearing out stock. I'm sorry to the setter for facing this harassment and to others who have been in the same boat recently. Yeah, we fight um, against harassers and intolerant people by harassing others and have zero tolerance. That'll show them how these people function. Source here and the culprit is, damn, this person is just actually crazy insane. You spent money just to leave the hate review? That's something all right. So this person here, it's Flipsy. Someone mad they caught a block? Never mind, I don't feel so bad anymore. Oh God, it was Flipsy. Oh God, it was Flipsy. Ah, uh, Flipsy, come on, man. If it was you, dear Lordy, man, just chill. That Flipsy is a needy Sanji anti. <clears throat> of course, it's effing Flipsy. Don't think any side of her. Uh, glad people are calling this out. Too many people in the past seen to write idiots attacking livers or people who still enjoy needy Sanji as secret needy sisters or NDF. While most of the sub agrees that attacking people is harassment and just plain wrong, there will always be a minority of people doing it. <clears throat> of course, there's always the, the vocal minority who are just a-holes. And I don't support that. I never have, never will. The other parts of wonderful things, she's going to be having a Malaysian convention, Animangaki 2024, on 23rd to 25th of August. Doki World Tour is still on. Doki World Tour is still happening. She's still having her special guest appearance there. Malaysia, woo! Mines Convention Center, located at Selangor. Dang it, <laughs> this, this person wasn't able to go. The fact that only big anime cons in KL have the power to attract big names like Doki. It's close to me, but the moment I hit the highway, the S seems, feels further than expected because of traffic, of course. She's slowly cutting out of Nidhi Sanji's mind share. I'm all, I'm all for it. Yep, it started becoming her mind share, not the other stuff. And as more convention stuff related to Doki, we have the hype company booth with Doki Bird is crowded at Anime Expo, of course, because she has you know, her, her moment where she's, you know, having her chat with people that are there. She was there, of course, electronically. She wasn't there, I don't think. At least she didn't mention being there in person. She is in Canada, remember, and it's a long flight from Canada to Los Angeles from where she's at. 
she's like in Ontario, I believe, or something like that. She's like, I think on the West Coast. I, I'm mistaken. Either Ontario, West Coast, one of those places. And here we have her with everybody, you know, basically doing the 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 happiness and all that kind of stuff. So you see a lot of happy faces there, a lot of happy people there. Good Smile Company, of course, wanting to celebrate Doki's birthday in style. The hype booth and everything was big. I love it. I love it. I love the height and I buy power people. They're amazing for doing this for Doki. She deserves this and many more. There's one guy in the middle. Looks like he's holding flame like he's a firebender or something. Deserve, not so negligible. I need to see that now. Yeah, it looks like he's holding a flame like a firebender. Yeah, very true. <laughs> okay, yeah. That's that's kind of funny. Um, can that crowd fit Niji Santi's booth? Yes, but they chose not to. So yeah, you know, a little bit of good times for Doki Bird. A little bit of heartwarming stuff with, you know, all the Philian stuff that's been happening, all the Philian things that have been occurring. It's a big, big, big stink in the VTuber community, the whole Philian thing. I hope she gets that fixed, but I'll say, I'll just say she was ignorant. She was ne uh, and negligent on that part. She just didn't have an idea of how that thing worked. But now let's go on to something heartwarming. It says, I have no doubt Doki wanted to make uh, Clea happy with this achievement and being such a smile to my face. Go and give Clea congratulations. Clea is, is the one who I've uh, been holding this in for so long, crying, shaking, throwing up. My Doki Bird design is going to be a Nendoroid. So Clea is the original designer of Doki Bird, this design of Doki Bird, of course, and it is now Good Smile Company, of course, done the right way with Good Smile Company talking to Clea and Doki Bird also talking to Clea for uh, distribution rights, for commercial rights, paying them what they deserve for commercial rights. And I hope Fillion does that soon as well, if at least to make the PR stuff look better for her. I'm really glad for Clea. This is their their whole thing here. Of course, give them a congratulations because they worked hard on the Doki Bird outfit and the Doki Bird, the original Doki Bird look. Deserves it. Congrats. Huge congrats. That's amazing. She's going to be so cute. So yeah, huge congratulations and a positive bit of things here. It's an iconic design now and deserves to be preserved as an Enderoid. Looking forward to our next Bounty Hunter and Enderoid. Time to make uh, Kamamai proud. Yeah, Kamimama. Uh, the, basically the person that is the new designer. She wants to make them proud, which was the person who designed uh, Selene. And of course, new things are going to happen and more wonderful things are going to happen. And I'm so very glad for this. This is a rumor that is to be taken with a grain of salt because it's dangerous to put rumors like this. I have been guilty of this myself in the past of putting rumors like this and treating them as if they are canon. They're treating them as if they are actually there. Yes, their voices sound similar. But remember, there was a bunch of people who... Um, I said that Annie sounded a lot like Nyaners and you know other people sounded alike and oh my god they're doing it to copy Nyaners and to get the popularity from Nyaners and blah 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 so there are people who have similar sounding voices out there of course she had that mistake recently where you had a still image of a, a, a Mikineko video Mikineko OBS thing someone was saying it was a glitch within OBS when you're running two streams at once and the system can't run it I cannot verify that myself because you would need actual like metadata to figure out if it was from the same PC, number one, if it was um, from the same IP address doing it at the same time, you have to have logs, you have to have all these types of things. So of course, take this with a grain of salt. And as someone's going to mention down here so far, it hinges on one possibly sounding alike, but many people sound alike. Mume and Gura sound similar. And then of course you have uh, purpose mimic. Also close this thing implies no. An alleged loading screen glotched at the end of the stream. However, it can easily be someone's background or as stated watching Mika Neko stream. Not replying to chat, edited. However, she actually responded to chat twice. All in all, the proofs are flimsy. Anyone who's saying that is 100% Mika Neko in one way, shape or form is being disingenuous. It is not 100%. You can't tell without actually being there, without actually having that verified by them. The new girl's trying to mimic Rushia. Seeing Rushia was definitely the highest super chat. Mimicking someone usually is the best way to grow. Yes, and then they create their own design after that of course the not responding to chat is time indicative and in indicates a new streamer i can verify that myself i didn't used to respond to chat hardly at all holy crap there would be hours before i responded to chat back in the day now i try to keep it within at least five minutes max if things are going fast and i'm doing recordings and things like that but i try to respond now but yeah that shows new streamer not necessarily anything bad welcome back everybody to another vtuber showcase as a part of salvi's vtuber corner where i take a look at vtubers that are not getting as much recognition as they deserve here we have another one dgen diary which is a looks like a commentary slash 4chan reading uh one kind of like how parrot 4chan is but of course on a smaller scale they are a full-time vtuber they're 
trying to become a full-time VTuber. They aren't one yet. They are not a LewTuber. They're just doing this type of stuff here. Let's give you an idea of what the kind of stuff that they do with um, a little bit of the video stuff. Here we go. Off Kai. After thoughtful consideration, Off Kai Expo believes that we don't need a black car for in our expo. Slash into summer with Matara Khan and Mint Phantom in. at Off Kai Gen 3. Matara Khan, you can bug me anytime, honey. Mint Phantom. In. I am here for all the. Wh what is that? Booze. Never mind. Never mind. So yeah, they're doing it kind of like the the uh, the Parrot Four Chan style stuff. I'm not comparing them to anybody, but that's the kind of thing that will evoke more of what you want to know about kind of give you an idea of the full rundown of things they are their own person of course and they are doing an amazing job this is their twitter dj underscore diary and their actual uh youtube channel dj underscore diary as well dj diary fully there 451 subscribers eight videos they've gotten into this recently as of a month ago they are trying their hardest they are doing as much as they can. They're saying, definitely a nerd, pursuing CS major, doing commentary style threads, enjoying fast paced FPS as well as open world exploration titles. You know, uh, Tears of the Kingdom, Doom Eternal. I played Doom Eternal, really good stuff. They haven't streamed yet. They're planning to do it in the future, but right now they're just creating YouTube content like a lot of us are. I create YouTube content, other people do. Uh, they're gonna continue doing this 4chan thing, see how it pans out. Seems to be doing pretty well for them in the case of a lot of people watching them, which is great. I wanna help, you know, grow what they have. Give a couple of extra eyes, if you will, about this. They are always willing to, to collab with anyone else. They enjoy having anonymity, as I do, in being a VTuber. VTubing, being in VTubing does allow you a lot of anonymity as long as you go about it the right way. And uh, it says, my friends don't know I spend half of my day watching 2D anime girls. I watch a lot of anime as well. They do have some big projects planned in the future. Uh, they're going to stick to be creating the, 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 you know, these types of uh, 4chan thread style channels on the, on the main channel that they have, the style videos. They will create a second channel for other ideas they have, becoming a maker creator, weird contraptions that uh, live chat can interact with, like CSS and that type of things, like the kind of thing that Gigi did, I believe, and that type of thing, where it's interactive with the live chat. That is actually very, that's kind of cool. Uh, becoming a Linux nerd, I tried Linux myself. It's not too hard, but it went over my head a bit. Uh, they're planning to keep improving and not give up, which is something I always recommend to everybody. And they said they like the fact that they can have a hairy dude be created into a 2D anime waifu, aka 3D model. Don't tell your parents that you're planning to become a VTuber, worst mistake of a life. So yeah, I mean, it also is a lot of culture wise, but I'm very glad that they have chosen to give me a chance to show who they are and what kind of content they're creating. Of course, take a look at it. Like I mentioned, DJ and Diary is their main thing. If you'd like the 4chan style videos, I do recommend them. They do have very interesting stuff, very funny stuff. I think you're going to be entertained. Thank you so much for being a part of this corner, DJ and Diary. I do wish the best for you. And of course, let me know how things are going. Another little bit of extra meme. It's no one's getting harassed. Needy sister, needy sister, making the monsters themselves. And then it's like, stop harassing me. Yes, they make their own monsters and they get scared by their own monsters that they created. It's kind of a way that any cult-like following does it. And I, uh, the only reason I use that word is because of the way that the extreme people do it. In anime, there are cult-like followings too. And Hollow Life has cult-like followers. They go extreme. They make the, the, the company their identity. And then if someone ha attacks their identity, they go crazy. All for right now. Of course, comment, like, and subscribe down below. Thank you for being here. Of course, I love having the conversations with you guys. I love having these things with you guys. And I do appreciate it whenever you guys do comment. Take a look at my description for my socials. There's a Discord. There's Twitter. There's other places that you can check me out. Twitch, etc. And also check on your screen right now because there might be a video that you might enjoy. Thank you.